for you. I'm going to tell you again and again and again, probably, there's coming a day when that's going to stop. You're going to get so comfortable that when that day comes when you have to stand, you ain't going to be able to stand. He said, gird yourselves and lament how lie on my in sackcloth for the meat offering and the drink offering was withholding from the house of your God. We have withholding the sacrifice. We have withholding the offering. Answer this for yourself. When you go out of here today, how much of you is given to God throughout the rest of this week. Think about it. How much of you is really given to God? I know you got duties, I know you got responsibilities, you got families, you got jobs, whatever. I understand that. You can give yourself to God wherever you are. Whatever you're doing, you can be used of God. How much of us is really given to God when we go out of here? How much is the office of giving to God while we're in here? <clears throat> hmm? Think about that. That's what God wants. Again, I'll give you the scripture. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. We are supposed to sacrifice everything to God. That's, you know, if God just saved you, because he wanted to make you feel good. If God just saved you because he wanted you to have that, that feeling that you can get when the Holy Spirit comes and begins to move. If God just wanted to make you feel like that all the time, why did he not just take you to heaven? Save you and take you. Get it over with. You're here for a purpose. You're here for a reason. You are here to be the light, to be the witness, to be the salt, to be all those things. That's what you're here for. But you cannot do that until you get that burden, until you get that hunger, until you get sold out, dedicated, and committed to God. He says all these things. Now listen. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Is not the meat cut off before our eyes? Yea, joy and gladness for the house of our God. Listen, this is what God has given me. He said this and gave me this scripture. Sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of your God, and cry unto the Lord. God is calling us. He's telling us what we need to do. We need to sanctify a fast. We need to cry out to God. We as a church need to cry out to God. We need to howl. We need to moan. We need to mourn. I'm going to tell you something. We come in here and we say that we care and we make requests for the law and we say a little prayer when we gather on the altar and I'm just going to be as honest as I can be because God is telling me this. I know it to be true. We go out of here and we forget all about it. We're so caught up in the affairs of this life that we forget about what matter. We're so caught up in our day-to-day -day world that we forget what matter. And there's a scripture that says, no man at worth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. If you're going to fight for God, if you're in this war, you got to get untangled from all this other stuff. Well, Brad, how can I do that? i got to make ends meet. i got to do this. i got to do that. No, you do not. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he'll take care of the rest. I'll guarantee it. If you do the work of God, he will take care of you. I promise you he will. Well, it had that so forth. Well, maybe you ain't trusted him yet. Maybe you ain't sold out yet. Maybe you ain't totally committed yet. There are those of us sitting here who don't have to live the way we live, but we have chosen to by our disobedience. We have chosen to by not selling out to God. I'm telling you this because God is telling me that if you would totally sell out, God will take care of everything else. God said so. 
He said it in his word and he's telling me right now to tell you that if you sell out, he'll take care of everything else. Now I don't mean lobster and flame and yarn, but he will take care of you. But you gotta sell out. He's calling church. He's calling to his church. He's calling to the last day's church. He's saying we need to sanctify. We need to call a solemn fast. We need to cry out. We need to plead. We need to get heartbroken. We need to howl. We need to mourn. We need to just pour ourselves out on the altar before God. That's what he's calling for. And we need to do it. Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. I am telling you, he is telling me to blow the trumpet, to sound the alarm, because there's a day coming, and it's coming soon, when there ain't going to be a chance anymore, when you ain't going to get another opportunity. You're not going to have to and to keep begging and to keep sending you messages and to keep trying to get you to move. That day is going to stop. That day is going to end. And that day is not at hand. It is close. It is closer than you believe it is. We have been given opportunity after opportunity after opportunity and we ain't doing anything with it. And that time is going to end. He's calling. He's sounding the alarm. Now is the time. We better sell out. We better present that sacrifice. We better give ourselves to God. Joel 2, verse 12. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart. Again, I'm going to ask a question. You answer these questions for yourself. Be honest. Be just as honest as you can be. How many of you are chasing after the Lord, are serving the Lord, are seeking the Lord with all your heart, with everything you are, with every fiber of your being? That's what he wants. He said, turn to me with all your heart. Listen. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and, repent, and repenteth him of evil. Get this, turn ye with all your heart, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning, rend your heart and turn unto the Lord. That's the problem with the church. We haven't rent our heart. We haven't gotten a broken heart. We haven't turned back to God the way that he's calling for us to turn back to God. And I know I'm going against the grain. I know I'm preaching different than 99.9% .9 of the pastors in America are preaching. They're all preaching it's about feeling good and it's about prosperity and it's about getting stuff and it's about this and it's about that. It is not. It is about souls. It is all about souls. It is about people dying and going to hell. And they're not going to be delivered unless a church gets a broken heart. Unless a church gets a burden. Unless a church wins their heart and turns to God. Well, Brad, where should I be a Christian if it's going to hurt? Because it hurt Jesus to make you a Christian. Amen. It should hurt. If it don't hurt, something is wrong. Do we understand? We have made this about something other than what it's supposed to be. It's not about your comfort. It's not about your feel good. It's not about getting stuff. It's not about any of that. It is about souls. That's all it's about. That's the reason we're here. One reason, and one reason only that Christ left heaven. To save lost souls. That's right. And that's why he left us here. To save lost souls. That's what it's all about. 
Church, we've got to get back where we're supposed to be. We've got to wake up. I know we're fighting years and years and years of the church being wiser than what God called it to be. But it's time to change. It's time to get back. It's time to get a hold of this. It's time to get a hold of God. And you ain't got a hold of God yet. Come on. We have not. How do I know? We're going back to Acts. Look what that church was. And that's our example. That's what we are supposed to be. If we would get a hold of God the way they got a hold of God, if we would understand our purpose the way they understood their purpose, if we would realize why we're here the way they realize why they're here, then we would be like they were. But no, we want stuff. We want to feel good. We want pleasure. We want this, and we want that. It's not why you're here. And I'm going to tell you again, if that's not why you signed up, you better tender your resignation. It's time to get honest with God. It's time to get real with God. You better get in or you better get out of the way. That day that I've been reading about, that day is coming. It's coming soon. It's coming quick. It's right around the corner. And if you ain't sold out, you ain't going to make it. You will not survive. Verse 15 of chapter 2. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth in his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore shall they say among the people, Where is their God? Listen, he's calling everybody. Everybody. This ain't just for the preacher. This ain't just for the pastor. It ain't just for the church officer. Listen, he's calling everybody. He said, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Get the elders. Get the children. Uh, get the bridegroom. Get everybody. Now, uh, listen, and this is so crucial. I've said this before, but somebody needs to get a hold of it. He said, everybody. Everybody. And I'm going to tell you, if you're a member of this church, that's you. Everybody needs to get a hold of this thing. We have to be one in spirit. We have to be one in mind. We have to be one in purpose. Or we cannot move forward. We cannot accomplish what God has called for us to accomplish. We have got to be one. Just as the body is one, we have to be one. We have to work together. The same vision. The same goal. The same purpose. And I'm going to say it again. If that ain't what you signed up for, then hand in your resignation. If you don't want to do it, if you ain't into that, if you don't believe me, if you think I'm full of hogwash, then get out of the way and let us go. Listen, I don't want nobody to leave. I don't want nobody to go away. I, I don't want to lose anybody from here. But listen, if you're not sold out, you're a hindrance. And so I can't put it any plainer. You've got to be sold out. You have got to be committed. You have got to be dedicated. You have got to give your all. Mm -hmm. He's calling everybody that they would weep and they would cry and they would pray and would rend their hearts, give their hearts to God, be that sacrifice. Then will the Lord be jealous for the land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. If we do these things, then will the Lord begin to bring forth that fruit. Then can we become fruitful. Then can we accomplish what he wants us to accomplish. And my mind keeps going back, and i got to go back to it, because I want you to think about it, and I want you to remember it. We've been here for 40 whatever years. Where's the fruit? Any vine in me that does not produce fruit will be cut off. I don't want to be cut off. I don't want to be cast away. Verse 23 of that chapter, chapter 2 of Joel. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the facts shall overflow with wine and oil. 
You know, we've prayed, we've cried, we've worked, we've tried, we've done different things to try to get people in. We ain't done the right thing yet. This is what God says to do. Rend your hearts. Weep. How? Cry. Pray. Be that sacrifice. Sell out. Dedicate to God. Then he will send the fruit. Then the floor will be full. Then these things will happen. I will restore to you the ears that the locust have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Listen to me. I said, this church has been here for however many years it's been here, and I don't see any fruit. Why isn't it here? Because it's been eaten by the caterpillar and the palmer worm and the canker worm. I, I wasn't there. I don't know what happened. But I can tell you, according to the word of God, I can tell you, according to what God is telling me, something over these years hasn't been right. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there. I don't know. I just know what the Spirit's speaking to me. Something hasn't been right. Therefore, God sent the caterpillar and the palmer worm and the canker worm and ate up the fruit. But listen to what God said. If you call that solemn assembly, if you call that solemn fan, if you weep, if you howl, if you mourn, if you rend your heart, if you turn back to God, listen to what he said. I will restore to you the ears that the locusts have eaten. He will bring it back. He will bring the fruit. He will restore everything that was lost. And he will give us an increase. He will send the fruit. Things will happen. It will. I'm telling you, it will. According to the word of God. According to what the spirit is saying. Uh, according to what he's telling me to tell you. If we will do these things, he will restore those years. I will restore to you the ears that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I send among them. Listen, we ain't got nobody here. This church is in the shape that it's in. We had all these problems because the devil's been fighting. Nope. God sent the locust. God sent the caterpillar. God sent the canker worm. Because if you ain't going to do it his way, he's not going to allow it. He will. He said he sent the problem. That was his army that came and caused those problems. And if we're not going to be obedient, if we're not going to heed the call, if when God sends it, if we're not going to answer it, then he's not going to let us produce fruit. He's not going to let things happen. He will send the caterpillar and the locust and those things. He said, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I set among you, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. If we do these things, he will send the fruit. He will bring an increase. He will make it plenteous. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of your Lord, your God. And you shall know that I am in the midst. But we got to do what he's called us to do. And probably, well, I'm going to throw out a number. Probably some of you that are sitting here ain't feeling it. You just ain't feeling it. You better cry to God that you will begin to feel it. You better pray for a burden. You better cry out that your heart would hurt. Because you are supposed to have the heart and the mind of Christ. And his heart breaks for the lost. His mind is focused on the law. And we're supposed to have that same thing that he had. And if you just ain't feeling it, you better cry for it. You better seek after. You better, you know what? I've been praying that for quite some time. I do have a desire to see the all saved. But I want it to hurt. I want it to hurt because it hurt my Lord. It hurt my Savior. I want what he had. And I pray for that. And you can pray for that. You can pray for that burden. You can pray for that desire. You can pray that it would get to you so bad that it would drive you to do what God would have you to do. If we do all that, God will send the increase. God will send the fruit. And listen, this is getting very familiar scripture now. We've talked about this scripture a lot in this church. In the last days, 
I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. But listen, that don't come till after all this other stuff. What we like to do is pull out the stuff that sounds good and just, I'll take that. But if you back up, now this all gets together. First, you got to cry out. You got